Hi, and welcome to MarylandReporter.com's weekly podcast. I'm Andy Rosen, here with editor and publisher Len Lazaric, and Charles Robinson of Maryland Public Television. This week we're going to talk about the use of social networking in the 2010 election campaign. This is something that really took off over the last two elections, and it's really getting to the point of being normal part of doing business now. Uh, we had a couple stories this week about how this played out, and Charles has done some research as well. Um, so I think we'll... I, I just wanted to throw out that I had not even, this is Len, I had not even heard of Twitter until the 2008 campaign and Governor O'Malley and Comptroller Peter Francho yeah. were Twittering from the Democratic Convention. And that's when I even first heard of Twitter, which may reflect my age, but in <laughs> any case, I mean, <laughs> and then it kind of, and then it kind of died out. But now it's, uh, I mean, it's an explosion. Well, I always remind myself of uh, the first year that I started blogging from uh, one of the national conventions, which was in 2004, and I was a rarity in the group. And at the last uh, national convention that I went to, there was a whole room that uh, separated what I would call the new media folks. It was pretty Spartan. But I'm going to guess as we move ahead in this process that it will it not only becomes a part of what you do, but it is how what you do. And we saw a lot of that at the national level, but I think now we're going to see a lot of it at the local level. And uh, I believe you guys have done some reporting on the fact that the Election Commission now wants to regulate part of this process. Yeah, I was, a, I was at a seminar uh, on... Wednesday, I guess, that, uh, and I just went to hear Jared uh, DeMarinus, who's head of uh, enforcement for candidates and campaign finance, uh, run through the whole gamut with candidates and treasurers and telling what their obligations were. And toward the end of that presentation, he says, oh, and we're also developing regs about the use of social uh, uh, media. And my ears picked up, and I talked to him afterwards. I said, has anybody written about this? And so we did it. We did a little story, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's it's clearly something that they feel the need that for you to go on Facebook or wherever and be able to identify what's really coming from the candidate and what may not be coming from the candidate. Now there was a little bit of question about uh, Twitter. You know, as as you know, it's. Limited to 140 characters per entry. Uh, it doesn't look like people are going to have to write a tweet that mentions that they're by authority of this candidate or another. There will be a, probably another way of disclosing that where you don't have to do it. In yeah, way. they're they're looking at, at 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 maybe making a registry of tweet accounts of Twitter Twitter of Twitter <laughs> accounts. Uh, and they're also trying to write the regs in such a way that uh, because it's, even though Facebook is really dominant out there in terms of use by campaigns, there are other kinds of things like Facebook, so they have to be able to write the regs so that it applies to everybody. Well, gentlemen, there were two things that happened uh, when Ehrlich announced that I thought was very interesting. I had a conversation with Paul Sherrick, who is one of the advisors to the Ehrlich campaign, and he said in so many words, we must be in the social media area. One of the things that apparently swayed uh, the ex-governor to decide to run for governor was the fact of the number of friends that he received on Facebook. Uh, and that was kind of this impetus that there was something going on, if you will. I think the other interesting thing is something that happened this week, gentlemen, with the resignation of Rick Abruzzi, uh, Abruzzi as the uh, the governor's spokesperson. And according to my sources, Abruzzi told uh, one of my colleagues that he would leave the actual governor's office and move to the campaign if he felt the campaign was in trouble. Well, guess what happened this week? He resigned and he moved to the campaign. And I don't know what that says about the campaign in general. Are you floating this rumor, or Charles? Uh, no, or no. This is this is fact that uh, Abruzzi has left the governor's office. Oh well, that, no, 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 no. I know that, that, that That's has fact. been announced, but but the the the, the motivation strikes me uh, uh, as something uh, uh, interesting. Uh, and and I'll just throw in the I was at a speech that the, oh, Governor Malley gave to the 
party faithful at the Jefferson Jackson dinner in Howard County last night. And I would have to say that the, the applause was polite but not raucous to uh, his standard campaign speech. So, and, and if you drill down in the numbers in the post poll that came out on Monday, uh, you will see that there, there are things that uh, they might have some uh, concerns about. But, of course, this is, uh, you know, we're in the middle of May, and, and we got It's fluid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're, they, they're going to have so many friends on Facebook and fans and, man, and Twittering. When I start getting tweets <laughs> from the governor, I'll, I'll, I don't know. I well, you know, I knew, it was, I knew it was big when the governor tried to friend me. Um, like, ouch. <laughs> um, well guys we're out of time for the week please check out our tweets and our facebook page uh md reporter on twitter uh maryland com on facebook you can like our page it's not fan page anymore they just changed that term uh charles why don't you tell people how to get in touch with you and how to see what you're up to well, I write a blog that's called Charles Black Politics Blog, and uh, you can find that on blogspot.com, as well as I uh, appear on Maryland Public Television, uh, covering the state capitol as well as business in the state. All right. Well, thank you both very much. Also, check out our feature on candidates using Twitter. Are they doing it themselves, or are they having aides do it for them? Uh, there's a lot of that difference. That comes under the, hmm, question. <laughs> we'll see. So, um Definitely uh, listen to our podcast next week, and you can find this on iTunes as well. Thank you both, gentlemen.